but I'm really excited today because we have Hope Ware from Under the Median. She is very frugal and she's got some amazing tips on how to have a debt-free Christmas. Her and her husband raised four boys uh, debt-free and even were able to pay cash for their home on a, an income of less than 40,000 a year. So she is definitely frugal. I want all of her tips and she's gonna be sharing with us how to have a debt-free Christmas and still have a great holiday season. So I will let you go ahead and take it away, Hope, and um, if I see questions at the end, I'll, I'll let you know. Shannon, thanks so much for having me here today. I have been like so excited about sharing with this group because like this is my bread and butter telling people great ways that they can express love and appreciation to family and friends at Christmas without dropping a whole lot of cash. So this is interactive, y'all. So <clears throat> I want to know when, when I say like, okay, Christmas budget. Okay. So put a one in the comments. If you're like, yep, got a budget, confident in that budget. Good to go. Put a two. If you're like, mm, you know, I really see my Christmas budget as sort of a living document. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think I kind of know what I'm going to spend, but I figure if I need to throw some extra money at it, I'm just going to figure out how to do that. And put a three in the comments if you're like, Christmas budget? <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Okay. So that'll give us an idea of where we are at. So while you're, you. dropping, <laughs> while you're dropping those in the comments, I'm going to tell you that statistically, 50% of us actually have a Christmas budget or what we consider to be a Christmas budget, right? So, but almost half of Americans go into debt for Christmas. So clearly, if we think we have a Christmas budget, it's not working. And that is where the problem lies. Here's like another like astounding um, uh, statistic is the fact that not only do almost half of us go into debt to the tune of $1,000 or more for Christmas, and one third of us will still be paying it off in May. Wow. I know. And it's, and one in 10 of the people that actually go into debt for Christmas, they're just making minimum payments on their credit cards. So you know what that means? That means that those are the one in 10 people that 12 months later, when they're getting ready to charge next year's Christmas, are still paying off last year's Christmas. So mm -hmm. statistics like that, like they alarm me, but you know what alarms me even more? I have to be honest, the people behind those statistics. My heart goes out to people who feel like, oh my gosh, I, I, I have to go into debt to do this. I don't know what else to do because mm -hmm. I was once there. For years, my husband and I, even though we were living frugally, we would set a Christmas budget, at least what we thought was going to work for the Christmas budget. And because we felt so bad and so guilty, seriously, about the amount of money that we could spend on Christmas, we literally, we, we didn't go Christmas shopping until the week before Christmas. And I know that sounds like weird for someone who works, you know, with budgeting and really this is like my bread and butter. I really like numbers and figuring out how to make ends meet. It was that guilt factor. It honestly was feeling like I'm just not going to be able to, to get a gift that's going to be appropriate for these people. So I would wait. And the week before Christmas, we would go out and we would wind up. Tell me if this sounds familiar. We would wind up going to, from store to store, no list, no budget, no idea what we were going to spend per person. And, and we would throw, we would just go, oh, that looks good. And we would throw it into the cart no matter what it cost. And no matter whether it was just really something that the person was going to go, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you got this for me. We we're like, we're just going to get it done. And we would wind up, although we didn't like go into debt, we didn't slide a credit card. We slid our debit card and wound up taking money from other budget categories and living really, really lean January, February, and March in order to make up the difference. Wow. Yeah. So if that's where you're at, believe me, I totally get it. So I'm going to give you three steps today that are going to absolutely help you rock this Christmas season. Are we ready? Great. We're okay. excited. <laughs> All right. So let me see here. Oh, we got a lot of threes. Okay. Fantastic. So I'm going to tell you, first of all, <clears throat> how you're going to set this Christmas budget. Not only that, I'm going to tell you how to set a Christmas budget that will actually work. Part of the problem with a Christmas budget is the fact that when I ask people and, um, and I've done this before. So, um, do you know what you're going to spend on Christmas? They'll say, well, here's what I'm going to spend on gifts. That's the number one answer. 
So my question is, this is the interactive part again, what goes into your Christmas budget? It's more than gifts, right? So give me some ideas. Shannon, what else goes in your Christmas budget other than just gifts? You've got the food, um, kids. Like we have three little kids and their school start asking, you know, oh, bring a, a little gift for this or, um, you know, teacher gifts and um, like little treats for your neighbors and those people yeah. that stop by with a gift for you and you're like panicked, like, oh no, I didn't get a gift for you. Um, it just, little things they they just keep popping up um every year so yep, yeah exactly yep decorations whoever said oh, that decorations. absolutely <laughs> correct decorations what about so do you send out christmas cards i know some people still yeah do. we now, do we love to do, do that do you take into consideration the cost of stamps oh yeah that's something i always think of last right at the end when i'm about yes. to send them okay out. so that was me too i was like like cards were huge in my husband's family when we got married um, and this was the kind of card giving that even if you saw that Chris, that person every Sunday after church for Sunday afternoon dinner is the family, you still sent them a Christmas card yeah. in the mail, in the mail. You needed to send it in the mail. You didn't just hand them a Christmas card. You put it in the mail. So literally the year I got married, there were like 84 people on my card list. I'm not kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> I know it. I know it. And my husband was like, this is the tradition. I'm like, holy cow. And I'm adding up all the stamp money in my head. So stamps have to go on there. What if you have like family traditions? I know some families are like the extended family gets together for a meal in a nice restaurant, like the week or two before Christmas. That goes in your Christmas budget. If there's something you do as a family that, um, for instance, our, um, our ballet company here in town puts on the Nutcracker every year. It's it's an amazing production. But tickets are like 40 or 50 bucks a piece. Wow. But, you know, and it's okay. And so I'm my goal today isn't to tell you you can't do that. My goal is to tell you that you can do that as long as you have it budgeted for and it fits within your budget. Mm -hmm. As long as you can afford it and it's in your budget, do it. And make sure that you put it in the Christmas budget. So I have a budget summary sheet. And this goes through all of the categories of what should be in your Christmas budget. And that includes, by the way, those class parties. I am going to, Shannon, don't forget, I'm going to give you an amazing idea that is going to rock your world for those people who stop by your house and say, I have something for you. And you're like, thanks. Oh, great. <laughs> you will never, ever, ever not have a gift for those people again. I'm going to show you how to do it. I've done it for years and it works fantastically. Okay. So after you have your summary sheet, you've got it all filled out. You're going to total up all the categories and look at it honestly and say, does this work for me? Am I happy with this? And not only that, do I have the money to cover it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've got a, your, your, um, budget that has everything included now and it's actually going to work second step is you are going to create a prioritized gift list and let me tell you what i mean by prioritized i'm going to show you once again so i have a sheet here here's my gift all right notice all the people at the top mom dad the kids it's it goes from those people you're going to spend the most money on down to those people that you're going to spend the least money on. That's what I mean by prioritize. Why does that make a difference? It, it makes a difference in a couple of different ways. It makes it really easy to see people as groups. So I always wind up with like teacher gifts down at the bottom of the list. It's not that I don't appreciate them. I do. Believe me, I do. But I'm not going to spend the same amount on my child's teacher as I am on my child, right? Right. <laughs> so you wind up with people toward the bottom of the list to have commonalities. And the most, the most common commonality is the fact that you're going to spend five or $10 a piece on those people. I like to take those people and I take a different color marker. I'm all about color coordinating because I'm a visual learner. And you're going to take those people at the bottom and bracket them. And I always pick a specific color of marker that you bracket those people together. And out to the side, I write a note, DIY gift. I'm going to come up with an amazing DIY gift that isn't going to cost me a lot of money per person. And each one of those people in the bracket are going to get the same DIY gift. It saves a whole lot of time. It winds up saving money. 
And those people aren't going to compare gifts. They're not going to go, oh, I got the same thing. In fact, my kids' teachers are always like, did you see those those sugared almonds she made us. Yeah. I gave them all sugared almonds last year and they were thrilled. Like they weren't going, I can't believe she gave you sugared almonds and gave me the same sugared almonds. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. <clears throat> so it's okay to replicate those gifts. The other thing a prioritized gift list allows you to do if all the way at the bottom, when you total those gifts up and see that grand total, I am all about being honest with yourself and seeing it in print. Yeah. Total the money and look at it honestly and ask yourself, do I have this money and can I afford this? Right. We spent many, many years figuring out how we were going to buy gifts for people without breaking the bank. Because if you are in a position where you are still paying off debt, you need to consider, I am not telling you not to celebrate Christmas. I want you to. But I want you to do it in a way that is consistent with your other goals. Yeah. And yeah. so figure out how you can give gifts to those people and still show appreciation for them without spending so much money. So if it's prioritized, it allows you to look at those people honestly and say, where do I need to cut back? And it's okay to cut people off the list or it's okay to put together a three or four or five dollar gift and give it to them and say, Merry Christmas. I just want to let you know that I appreciate. You. And that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the other things that you can do to avoid going to the store at the last minute and not knowing what you're going to get is to fill out one of these. This is a Christmas wish list. And so you're going to list each person, their hobbies, and you're going to do this pretty early in the season. So when you go shopping, you already have an idea of three or four or five things you know would rock that person's world and would make them super, super happy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so you're not going in blind. And that is the other part of this problem, right, is the fact that we walk in and we're like, you look at your spouse or significant other or your child, whoever you're shopping with and go, they go, well, what are we going to get for grandma? And you go, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's me. I never know what to get people. Because <laughs> you don't know. But if you already have one of these and you've filled it out, let's say you're at, <clears throat> let's say you're at Mother's Day dinner and your mom goes, you know, I'm just so tired of not having a decent rubber spatula. You're yeah. going to go home and you're going to grab this gift list and write down, rubber spatula under mom's name and then you're gonna know because you're not left going what was it she said on mother's day she wanted i know it was something and you haven't a bloody clue <laughs> what it is that mom wanted <clears throat> so getting that gift list ready and getting it ready early in the game is really really important okay so now you have you have your prioritized gift list and you have a concrete number you got a number that is <clears throat> in writing that you y'all if you this is time to take a drink <clears throat> whatever beverage you have handy <clears throat> there you go perfect thank you all right so you have a number and you're going to take that number and you're going to write it and this is where i tell you this is like my secret my secret way of never going over budget it's going to look familiar to some of you that's right. I knew she was going to do that. <laughs> cash envelopes. That's right. You are going to have a cash envelope for each part. Christmas food. Because look, let's face it. You're, you're, if you go to parties, you're going to take something with you, right? That's mm -hmm. extra food. If you're going to make grandma's fudge and you got to buy like, um, I don't make fudge, so I don't know. You're going to buy chocolate. You're going to buy marshmallow cream you're gonna buy stuff that you don't normally buy all right mm -hmm. and so that all costs money so rather than overburden my regular grocery budget i just i just create a separate portion of my christmas budget specifically for christmas food and you know what that does it gives me permission to spend that money and not feel guilty yes and it gives me permission to know that it's part of the celebration.
because part part of Christmas is those feelings, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of it is emotional, and we want to like provide our kids with amazing experiences at Christmas. But but I want to assure you, having raised four children on an income, which when we bought this house, our income was thirty five percent above the poverty level. Wow. We give them amazing Christmases and there are traditions. My grown sons who actually, I should say my grown sons. Um, so my kids range in age from almost 24 down to 12. And um, so my two oldest sons are, are, have moved out of the house. They actually have an apartment together, which is really fun for them. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but they're calling me now going, okay, so I want to make sure I get this on my calendar. When are we going to do this event together as a family? When are we going to do this event? These are all um, traditions that we have created through the last 24 years with them that don't cost any money, but they are so important to them that they will deliberately call me well ahead of time and say, I got to get this down on my calendar because I don't want to miss it. Yeah, I love that. So you have your gift and I'm going to show you how I do it. Okay, so let's say my whole gift budget was $300, which is actually pretty close to my real gift budget. If anybody's wondering. Um, and I found a great blanket for grandma for $30. You can see right over there on the left-hand side that I subtracted that just like an old-fashioned check ledger. And I now I know I have $270 left. Now, what if you shop online? How many of us are shopping online this year? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get caught in those crowds. I don't know about anybody else, but <laughs> like, I'm shopping from home. So what do you do? You can't take, you know, you can't pay cash for something you're buying from Amazon. So here's the trick. The minute you push that send button, first you're going to check your envelope. You're going to make sure you've got the money available. Then you're going to make sure that you know exactly what Amazon is charging you. Push, Go ahead, push that red send button. Then you're immediately going to access, they will immediately send you um, your total. They'll send you your receipt. Make sure that you download that receipt and put it in a folder on your computer. It should say Christmas gift receipts, right? Should create a separate folder for it. Put all of those receipts, those electronic receipts into that folder. Then immediately, without waiting, so you don't forget, you're going to walk over to this envelope and you're going to take $30 out of here to pay for grandma's blanket that you just bought on Amazon. Physically remove the money from the envelope, okay? Now, the other thing that's really great is these are envelopes, right? So if you have physical receipts, you just open the envelope and keep the receipt in there. So if somebody needs to take back a gift that you purchased, then you know exactly where the receipts are kept. Oh, that's a great tip. I love that. A lot of people are always like, well, I do a lot of online shopping. How do I use cash envelopes? And that's exactly what we do. We, If we make an online purchase, we take it out and we put it either right back into the bank, that cash back into the bank to cover it, or we use it to stuff our cash envelopes for like the next month or something. We just put it in like a little jar and keep it. Exactly. And, and you know what? See, here's the deal. And I know people like Shannon and I, you know, we're like, pay cash, pay cash, pay cash, pay cash. <laughs> and the reason, there's a reason that we do that. We are um, visual people. We use, when we can feel something and we can see something, it means more. So statistically, you actually spend 20% less if you pay cash. There is a statistical reason why it's good to pay cash. But there's also like an emotional and mental reason why it's really critical to pay cash. And it is because when you see it, when you handle it, when you feel it, mm -hmm. it means more to you than when you are swiping a card. How many times have you walked into, oh my gosh, we just did this. Um, we walked into Sam's, I think and bought some stuff and I had I mean I knew how much it was going to be but we got all the way out to the car and I looked at my husband and I said so what was the total he goes yeah I don't know because we'd swiped our credit card at Sam's yeah he said I don't know just spit it out I got the receipt in here somewhere I'm like well I want to make sure that it was what I thought it was gonna be Come on. so all right so next tip if you um get all of this figured out and you don't have enough cash to cover it. I want you to have one of these, all right? You have to put goals in front of you. I am a huge proponent of making goals and making them visual. So this is a little Christmas savings tracker. There's 25 of those little um, stockings on it. Let's say that you need $500. Each one of the stockings is worth 20 bucks. You put 20 bucks into the Christmas kitty and you 
color in one of those stockings. And this, and you should have it where everybody can see it. And if you have children, I want you to include them and I want you to make it celebratory so that when you have saved another $20 toward the Christmas budget, you go, kids, come on in here. We're going to color in another one of these stockings. All right. So you get the kids immediately on board and they feel that excitement as you're getting closer and closer and closer to your goals. And I'll tell you why that's important, because we need to teach our kids to reach for goals and get and reach for them young. And this is exactly how you are teaching them to do that, um, because when you do that, you're going to have um, grown kids who are in their 20s who um, who call you and say, so I got this goal and here's how I'm tracking it. And what do you think of this? That is exactly what happens. So the other thing that happens when you have goals like this is your kids get to see provision over and over and over again. So I'm a Christian and we go, look what God provided. Oh, those stories are powerful. I'm just telling you, those stories are absolutely powerful. Okay, I want to be mindful of your time and I'm going to take some questions. But now what I want to do is I want to show you some gift ideas that are $5 or under that are great ideas to give away as gifts. And if anybody has questions, has many asked me questions? I don't want to like rush past yeah. something that people are feeling like. She Not so much, just, just people are loving it. <laughs> okay, so Shannon, this is going to solve your gift problem of people showing up at your door and you don't have a gift for them. <laughs> I have done this for years and it works like a charm. Mm -hmm. You are going to every single year at Christmas, purchase two neutral gifts. They're extra gifts. Nobody's name is on the gift. They're not associated with anybody. They're just extra gifts. Mm -hmm. You're going to wrap them, set them aside, and don't put a gift tag on them. All right. So I'm going to give you, this is like my idea and I've done it for forever. All right. Do you see this? Yeah. This is a bar of premium soap. Okay. So this, I actually got it from, I'm, it's like right in front of my face. <laughs> this is um, a bar of a premium soap that I actually found at Dollar Tree. No joke. It's glycerin soap. It's really, really expensive glycerin soap. It was at Dollar Tree for a buck. Wow. And I gave this away extra. I, I gave this away last year, actually, as my teacher gifts. And they were like, oh, my gosh, where did you get that soap? I'm like, Dollar Tree. All right. So the bar of soap is a dollar. You're going to have Christmas towels that hopefully you have bought on sale. Be looking now, by the way. Um, this is a tip that I actually gave people that are on my newsletter list this week. I, I heard it and it's true. Black Friday has morphed and part of it is because of COVID um, because mm -hmm. online retailers know that you're going to be spending more time and more money online. So mm -hmm. rather than having like one big hullabaloo on Black Friday, they have made it. It's more like Black November. Yeah, I've noticed and, that. <laughs> I know. And so like I went to Amazon last night and I'm like, oh, holy cow. These people that told me this, they were right. Because as soon as November 1st hit, Amazon was having their daily deals that normally they never had until much closer to Black Friday. So um, so you need to just be aware of that and make sure you got your gift list ready and you're ready like now. So now really is the time. I think people think, well, gosh, it's so much before Christmas. You know, why Why is she spending so much time talking about Christmas now? Because really now is the time that yeah. you need to, to go ahead and look. So having said that, start looking for 50% off deals because they're going to put Christmas stuff on, on you know, that 50% off right now at this time. And find look for um, Christmas-themed dish towels. Don't get real thick towels. Get a thinner dish towel type material. Look for red or something with a stripe like this. Then you're going to wrap that soap up, tie the ends with some coordinating ribbon, and it looks just like a huge piece of Christmas candy. That's cute. <laughs> and so I have done it for years. I just keep a couple of them. Make sure that when you're doing this that you get something that um, if nobody alike stops by your house unexpectedly, you don't mind like keeping it and use it yourself. <laughs> but don't get something like if everybody in your family, I don't know, hates anchovies or something. I don't know why we give away anchovies. But <laughs> if, they, if you're choosing to give away anchovies, don't do it because then you're going to be going, what do I do with these anchovies? Everybody in my immediate family hates anchovies. So get something that you know that you'll just use it if nobody stops by unexpectedly. But that allows you to have those set aside. And when somebody stops by, you can say, oh, I have something I would love to you know, give you for Christmas. 
go into your bedroom, grab it and hand it to them. And it, it has worked for me for years and years. All right. That's a great idea. And Dollar Tree has, I mean, don't sleep on Dollar Tree. Like they have some really good stuff there. Um, oh my yeah. God. I, <laughs> I am in love with Dollar Tree. I was, we went to Dollar Tree a couple of nights ago to actually buy. I can't remember what we went there for. Something, something we were buying. And um, and I was like walking around taking all these photos of like all their Christmas stuff to get ideas. And my husband's like, what are you doing? Because it, <laughs> it was like eight o'clock at night. And he was like, I'm so tired. I want to yeah. go home and I want to get ready for bed. Why are you snapping all these photos? I'm like, sorry. <laughs> So yeah, so I like I like have an I like an idea file for for Dollar Tree. So that actually is my next idea. I love to create. If you want inexpensive gifts, create inexpensive gift baskets, and Dollar Tree is my go-to place. You yeah. can create themed baskets using items from Dollar Tree like that, and do it in under ten dollars every single time. Yeah. Love Dollar Tree. So I actually have um, I have a couple of ideas here. Here's the other thing that you can do. Um, if you are far enough out, now this is getting a little close to Christmas right now, but I shop clearance sales throughout the year mm -hmm. and I look one to two weeks after every major holiday. And you also want to look for those low, low clearance prices to take place at the end of seasons. All right. So for instance, as soon as school starts that's like the magic trigger for um for different merchants to start lowering all their all their summer goods here's what you need to understand just because something says easter or it's in the um thanksgiving aisle or the um valentine's day aisle doesn't mean that you have to give it for that season yeah. or that that holiday because some of the general merchandise things that are actually in those areas of the store have nothing to do with that holiday. Mm -hmm. If you want to get inexpensive, so look for like red, just plain red cloth napkins after um, after Valentine's Day. Guess mm -hmm. what color red is also good for? Christmas. Yeah. You can get red cloth napkins, especially if you layer them with a silver or a gold. It's stunning, absolutely stunning, very elegant. And, and you can pick up stuff like that for 90% off after Valentine's Day, stuff that's just red. Smart, yeah. <laughs> so I do it all the time. I'm gonna give you some ideas of stuff that I've gotten. All right, so this, here we go. Is that not adorable? All right, so I'm gonna tell you, I wouldn't necessarily get this for Christmas, but I wanted to show it because it's it's um, a great example of what I'm talking about. I actually mm -hmm. set this aside for, um, for a baby shower. Um, oh, cute. I got the basket, the lined basket and the bunny on clearance at Kroger after Easter for a dollar twenty-five. Wow. I know. I know. So then so cute too. I got the little ducky. He was marked down to a quarter. And these little sockies marked down at Big Lots. Big Lots always has a section where they have all their markdowns. So when I put it all together, I've created this amazing gift. Now I would probably, if I was ready to give this as a gift, I would probably um, run into Dollar Tree and get like some baby bath lotion or something like that and stick it in yeah. here. But the whole basket was put together for under six bucks. Wow, that's all a right. great <laughs> Couple more ideas. You need to look after Mother's Day for things like body creams oh yeah these are really popular on mother's day and they'll mark them down arbitrarily after mother's day so look for that this is body butter this stuff is like amazing i'm just saying <laughs> uh, this came from walgreens this is a great this is a scarf okay and so it was marked down 90 percent at walgreens it was the end of the season and so i think i paid like 59 cents for it but look what happens when you layer that in a basket with some other items that you have gotten for 90% off. Oh, that's cute. And you've lined the basket with the, um, with the scarf. 
Wow. I never think to do that. <laughs> That's such a smart idea. And so you can look for baskets like mm -hmm. at garage sales or estate sales. Oh, yeah. Or, um, Goodwill, Salvation Army. I pick up baskets all over the place. And um, so if you're wondering what I do, this is actually part of my gift stash. Mm -hmm. I have all of these items organized in bins and the bins are labeled on the outside. So I have a bin for children, a bin for women's items, a bin for miscellaneous and a bin for like more like wedding type stuff. And it's all mm -hmm. items that I have gotten for 75 to 90 percent off of retail value. Wow. That's awesome. I'm going to so, start doing that. <laughs> those are ways that you can still give amazing gifts. Now, as far as DIY gifts goes, I have, um, I'm known, if there's something you're known for, that's a great thing to give away to family and friends. I'm known for baking bread because for decades I've baked bread. And so for years we gave um, baked breads to all of our neighbors. And one year I decided to like, I decided for some reason to mix it up a little bit. And I made some of those layered soup um, mixes where you labor, you um, um, you layer like nine bean soup mix in a ball jar. Mm -hmm. And then um, I put a spice packet on the top and made a pretty, um, uh, you just take a Christmas uh, fabric that you've gotten on clearance and mm -hmm. then use pinking shears to make a circle and then put it on top of the ball jar. You know, does that oh. make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah very very inexpensive gift and so i did the good thing about those gifts too is you can get beans in bulk incredibly inexpensively so oh, yeah. you, just, you just create an assembly line and my family i was like oh look it's diy saturday and <laughs> and I, I had it all assembly line style and they all came in and helped me assemble all of these gifts and we probably i don't know gave at least 10 12 15 of them away i don't know at all the people that were toward the bottom of our prioritized gift list got yeah. that for christmas and um, you just make sure that you include instructions <laughs> as to right. how, what they're supposed to do with this gift mix. And, and the neighbors were like, oh, that's great. Thank you. And about four weeks after Christmas, one of my neighbors mentioned to me, he goes, we kind of missed our bread. <laughs> yeah, they're like, hey. And I'm like, OK, I give. Next year, I'm going back to the bread. So <laughs> after that, I went back to the bread. But there are so many amazing DIY gifts that you can do for well under five dollars. So, and I, I hope I hope you all understand what I'm saying about it's not the monetary amount. People love to get homemade stuff because people don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. People don't bake bread anymore. They don't bake cookies anymore. Not from scratch. Mm -hmm. Go to church potluck even, and you'll see what I'm talking about. People, people, you know, stop at Kroger and they buy cookies or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that if you're out of time. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that the appreciation factor for handmade goods has gone way up in the past decade or so. So don't sell yourself short. Don't feel like if you can't buy something from a store, you're not going to buy anything at all. Please don't feel that way. Right. DIY is great. I don't see any questions down here. Just people saying that they love your talk. <laughs> Yay. I'm so excited. And yeah, I really, really appreciate this information is so good, especially since we're coming up really fast on Christmas. And a lot of people, like everybody knows Christmas is on the 25th, but for some reason it still feels like a surprise sometimes. And if you're just starting your debt payoff plan, um, people feel like it's almost like a setback because they're like, oh, well, I, I was getting started with budgeting, but then Christmas came and I went back into debt. So I just want everyone to know that there are ways to do this frugal and still give great gifts and stay organized. And um, your tips are just so amazing and helpful. And um, yeah, thank you so much for- You're welcome. Hey, and and if, you, if you guys want, see, I have Christmas gift for 10, I have an, a list of themed gifts baskets and a list of DIY projects. Now, if you're wondering, where is she getting all of these forms? <laughs> yes, please tell us about this. <laughs> I actually wrote an ebook um, called Debt Free Christmas. And everything that I have walked you through today is in the binder. And more. Um, yes. I walk you through how to create your Christmas list. There's, um, there's also everything in there that I've told you about gift giving. 
um, about how to entertain on a budget. I have 12 sheets in there that are curated specifically by me that, um, that you won't find it any other gift binder, any other Christmas binder, because I have given you everything that I know about how to find gifts at discounted prices, clothing at discounted prices, gift cards at discounted prices, um, quality used stores online and in physical, um, physical stores where you can buy quality used gifts. Um, I, I've told you how to entertain on a budget. Um, all of those forms are in the, the debt-free Christmas binder. And there are actually five bonus eBooks that come with it. So, and, and I love, I just, I actually just, did you see that Shannon? I just added two more bonuses. Oh yes, they're awesome. The because cute. I had people contact me and say, I would love ideas on ways that I can actually express um, love to my older children um, with, without like spending any money. And I said, well, let's just do a coupon booklet. Yeah, it's really cute. <laughs> yeah, so I have two coupon booklets. One is for younger children. You just print it out literally and then, and then <clears throat> tie it with a pretty ribbon and it's a great stocking stuffer. And there are coupons in there for things like um, an extra half hour of computer time, staying up an hour after your bedtime, getting out of doing the dishes tonight, um, um, a quart of ice cream, you pick the flavor, family movie night, you pick the movie, a family outdoor adventure. These are all coupons for things that aren't going to cost you any money, but kids love getting coupon booklets. Mm -hmm. So there's one for younger kids and there's one for if you're like me and you have older adult children, there are things in there like, you know, uh, fill your fill your car tank with gas, yeah. um, which is, you know, <laughs> my oldest just graduated from college. And so like when he was in college, he was like, yes, a tank of gas. Thank you, mom. <laughs> um, and there's things like um, go for a shopping trip and we'll babysit the kids, things like that. So if you have older kids and so you can mix and match the coupons. So there's those two coupon booklets. And then I have a booklet on creating family holiday memories on a dime. This, this chronicles everything that my family has done to create those moments of togetherness without spending any money. And I really, I gotta be honest, that's probably my favorite ebook that is one of the bonuses. Yeah, that's awesome. It's just very personal to me and, and it has everything in there that you need um, to do what we've done. And then I have a set of coordinated gift tags and, um, oh, Black Friday Cyber Money Shopping Guide. Yes. And so you're going to want to get that. Like when you get the debt free Christmas binder, open that right away. Because clearly, clearly de the, the um, Black it's Friday funny. is black, black November now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> But it tells you all of my my special trade secrets as to how to organize everything so you know exactly yeah. where you're going and exactly what you want to get. Tell us where we can find you. Um, oh, you no, I should have said that. <laughs> uh, my website is under the median, M E D I A N dot com. And I named it that because we raised our four kids debt free on an income which was consistently under the national US median income. Yes. It can be done. <laughs> yes, it can. Yes, it can. Awesome. And not only that, because my byline is living with joy and abundance on a shoestring budget. And that's really, honestly, that is what I want people to understand. Living on a budget is not like being chained to, um, I don't know what, chained to something that's really uncomfortable. <laughs> right. <laughs> living on a budget, you can still have an amazing amount of joy but and a spirit of abundance you can you don't have to feel like like you know like you're you're depriving yourself it's not living on a budget is not about deprivation living on a budget is about the freedom to know to choose when where and how you're going to spend your money that's all it is yeah and you can still live with joy we had a blast raising kids despite the fact that we didn't have a lot of money <laughs> yes that's awesome i love your message and everything and I just want to thank you again so much for coming on and sharing your tips. They're like gold. They were so good. Um, and I'm like really ready to save even more money at Christmas this year. Um, and I'm sure everyone else too um, also enjoyed it. Um, and so, yeah, I guess we will 
close it up here and um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Find the remedy.